All right, I think I'm about to, I'll, I'll get started a lot, you know, a lot of the basic information. Uh, I don't think anyone will be too upset if they're a little late for, um, but it is 2 o'clock. Uh, so, hi, uh, my name is Kay Beasley. Uh, I am 1 of the co leads for capability 1. Um, specifically, I will be working with the MoFrat tool and being your point of contact for that. Um, we had a great session earlier. It's um, if you're here earlier, it's the same information, but um, uh, we will be recording this one and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get any of your questions answered um, as we go through it. So, um, let's see, let's start screen sharing and I can start telling you guys about the MoFrat. All right, are you guys able to see my screen? A little thumbs up in the chat if you could see it. Yes, okay. Awesome. I see Andrew can County can see it. So great. All right. All right. So today we're talking about the MoFrat. Um particularly MoFrat 2.0, this, uh, we've been working on this risk assessment tool since 2019, and it's finally ready to roll out to you guys. We're really excited about it. And hopefully um, I could get enough information out to you guys for you to give it a try, give us some feedback, and we hope to uh, use, you know, the initial, um, the initial rollout of this tool to just provide some improvements and keep working on it and keep perfecting this tool. So what exactly is the MOFRAT? Well, the Missouri Public Health Risk Assessment Tool. Um, this is a tool that uh, we've been developing to help public health planners prioritize their efforts for emergencies that would have the biggest impact. The number one takeaway for this tool is that it's for planning purposes to help uh, prioritize what your LPHA might be working on. It's not going to provide exact numbers. It's not going to tell you exactly how many hospitals will go down, how many beds you need, what your burn rates are. It doesn't go into the nitty gritty, but it does give you a really great overall big picture of what might be your, where your gaps might lie and what your LPHA might want to be working on in the future. This tool was originally created by Drexel School of Public Health over in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, they originally developed it for um, Pennsylvania, but we reached out to them and said, hey, we really like your tool. We wanted to see if we could adapt it for Missouri's use. So uh, a few back and forths and some planning meetings we were able to discuss what we needed for our own state and um, yeah, you know, make a few edits that we thought were important for our needs. I see a few more people trickling in. Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, we are talking about the MoFrat today and I was just describing that it is used for public health planning and it was created by Drexel University. Hi, welcome. All right. Well, uh, this tool provides several useful analysis tools and visuals um, to help determine what your LPHA and your uh, healthcare organization should be working on next. Um, again, this is not going to be the tool that tells you you precisely will have 53 casualties during an earthquake. Um, there are some better tools for that. This tool specifically to give you an overall picture on what your public health needs might look like during various scenarios. Um, and we could show you how it gets calculated um, later on in this. Uh, the three main steps are the baseline data. Uh, that's going to be some very basic information about your community. And then you're going to go on to step two, some specific hazard data. And then step three, the analysis that it provides. Uh, 
when you're looking at the screen, if you look towards the bottom right, I provided the link, but the link is also in the chat for you. This is where you are going to find and download the tool, a blank version of the tool. It will also have any other documents that we feel are pertinent, um, any data sources we want you to have. Later on, we'll be putting a manual up there uh, for a more comprehensive guide on how to use the tool. Anything MOFRAT, you will find it in that link. Great. This is a visual sort of uh, flowchart representation of how we get the numbers in calculations for the MOFRAT. Uh, like most risk assessment tools, it starts out with probability. How likely is this scenario going to be happening in your area? And then it moves on to some different uh, impact areas. It starts out with a human impact. You could think of this area as your day-to-day -day instances. What is your day-to-day -day mortality rates? Your day-to-day -day EMS transport transports on a normal day? Uh, normal provider visits, uh, what does your community look like outside of a scenario? Then we also have healthcare service impacts. So we collect some data about the number of pharmacists, the number of mental health providers, how many beds are within your healthcare facilities, as well as inpatient health healthcare facility infrastructure impact which we'll get into some of the details about what you might need for longer stays. Um, generators, if the power were to go out, linens, um, hospital personnel, those sorts of things. Uh, we ask for some community impact questions. These all come from a tab that I could show you when we do a live demonstration. We have a community characteristics tab that collects different information about your community, um, about your largest infrastructures, uh, about the general makeup of co your community, uh, just some of the specific details, and then public health. Um, a lot of these questions are specifically about your LPHA, your number of staff, staff, how many communications go out on a regular basis, how often you're doing surveillance and how many lab cases you can expect on a regular basis. All of these impact areas are going to be manipulated into a risk score. Then we also include at risk populations. At risk populations include people who may be blind or deaf, um, uh, um, otherwise um, having some access and functional needs. And it asks questions about the makeup of your community and, um, as far as risk populations, because as we all know, they are, you know, they have some inequities as far as impacts um, regarding different scenarios. Uh, we also ask some questions about your public health preparedness and your healthcare preparedness. What are some steps and resources you already have in your communities? And how prepared are you to face a hazard? Um, so that's just a basic visual of the different numbers that we gather through this data and how they form into a planning priority score. What's really interesting is that we provide um, one score, but we could also break it down to just public health or just healthcare systems. For example, if you wanted to find out a planning priority score just for public health, you can remove the two healthcare related impact um, scores up here, and then you can um, also remove the healthcare preparedness, and that equals a public health priority score. And the tool already does this for you. Likewise, you could also get a healthcare score by removing the public health service impact and the public health preparedness impact, uh, preparedness score. And you could get just a score for your health care. Um, the tool already does this for you. And I just think that's really fascinating that you can compare um, what might be relevant more for your public health um, LPHAs and what be, might be more relevant for your hospitals. So your first steps for using the tool, it's really plug and play. The first step is going to be entering a lot of numbers. 
and it's going to look intimidating at first. However, we did do some research and we identified a lot of great data sources for you already. I'm going to be showing you one of our databases um, later on and showing you that a good chunk of it is already there for you. Uh, or you could just reach out to us if you have some other ideas of where you might want to collect some of this data. Once you fill uh, out the first step, the baseline, a lot of the formulas are going to drag that information over into step two, your hazard analysis. So step two has a lot of hazards within it, but you'll notice once you open up those tabs that a lot of the information is going to be filled in already, and there won't be a lot to manipulate on that end. Uh, you will want to open it up, check it, see, you know, see how the different formulas came up with different numbers. Um, and some of the hazards do have very specific questions that are only relevant for that hazard. So you'll have a few blanks that you still need to fill out, but a lot of part one completes part two. So you'll want to fill in some of those additional hazard specific information, but then if you, you know, if you have any questions, if you accidentally deleted something, you're not quite sure what the hazard is trying to ask. You could always go into the MOFRAC guide or manual that we will be publishing and you could see why we came up with those scenarios, um, how they're relevant to Missouri and some of the very basic calculations that we came up with. Some of them are from Drexel. Some of them are unique to um, Missouri's. Note some of the formulas we've um, been troubleshooting do not like the number zero. So if you ever get an error message from putting in uh, some numbers, you might want to check if you have a number zero. Uh, just because of the math, it might not like that. You might just want to put the number one instead. We are planning on having a lot of that within our published manual as well. Some of our frequently asked questions. As you can see, this is an example of one of the formulas in our data source. We saw that for a planning scenario, mortality is expected to increase by 95%. So we uh, were able to get the original number from the community characteristics, multiply it by 0.95, and the Excel spreadsheet does all that math for you. That would be an example of one of the formulas that as long as you complete uh, step number one, you're able to get that information brought over to your hazard specific information in step two. Um, our last session, we had a lot of questions about data sources and um, uh, it's a very important part of this tool. So uh, one data source that we have provided to you on our website is the MOFRAT baseline data spreadsheet. This is going to be a companion doc that you'll want to work closely with at, while you're doing your MOFRAT tool. It's some publicly sourced data that we were already able to collect for you. So any information that we were able to find from the U.S. Census, anything that uh, DHSS had, um, especially from their Bureau of Healthcare Analysis and Data Dissemination, anything they were able to find for us, they were gracious enough to provide. Um, the Bureau of EMS, Primary Care and Rural Health, um, many different resources that we were able to essentially collect, put in one Excel sheet to make filling out the MOFRAD a lot easier. For things that are not pre-filled out in the baseline data spreadsheet, we did provide some recommended resources for where you might be able to find that data, including the FEMA RAPS tool. Um, I know a lot of you might be familiar with that or your EMDs might be familiar with that. Um, citydata.com, just some other different websites that uh, you shouldn't have to dig too deep. It should be publicly available. Uh, some of the data needed for MOFRAT is locally sourced. It will be very specific to your location. Um, some of them are just about your LPHA, things that you might already know. Um, the number of public health staff you have, 
how often you're sending out communications from your LPHA, those sorts of things um, you'll need to provide for yourself. Um, and notably, um, one of our biggest setbacks this while we've been working on this project has just been the availability and accuracy of data. For example, uh, our source for the number of EMS transports, we know will chronically underestimate. Uh, there are source for that. Uh, they're um, due to privacy issues and HIPAA issues. They were not comfortable providing an exact number for smaller communities. So smaller communities, anyone that has between zero to five daily average, they just put down as zero. Um, so one of our biggest feedbacks that we would like from you guys is that if at any point during this process, you think, hey, I actually think I know a better place to get some of this data, reach out to us, let us know. We are doing our best to collect appropriate databases that we could send out to you, but we would love your feedback to let us know where you're able to find some of this and if you've had any, you know, any preferred places for reaching out for this data. Um, within each one of the different data points, there is a spot to say data source. So that's another important part where you could help future people that are filling out the MOFRAT saying, hey, for this year, I was able to find it from this source. And they're able to, you know, repeat those steps, uh, see the logic from previous years and be able to fill it out with a little bit more ease. That's also another place where you might want to include any sort of setbacks you have with your data. If you find one of those data sets that you think might chronically underestimate, overestimate, you could write that in your data source. And it could just let you know and let anyone reviewing your MoFrat know, you know, how your tool is going. However, for the data that we have found in the baseline data spreadsheet, we do feel that it's been providing some really great results as far as, um, as far as prioritize planning prioritization and um, just planning needs. We feel that it provides an accurate enough estimate that we really like the data sources that we found. Um, it might not tell you exactly 1,052 people will be injured, but it will give you a great enough number, a close enough number for planning purposes. Great. Any questions about data sources so far? I know it was a hot button topic last session. Awesome. If not, we'll move on and I'm going to show you a real time example of how this sheet works. We're going to plug in a few numbers and uh, just play around with the tool for a moment. One moment while I switch over to that. All right, are you guys able to see uh, the MoFrat tool, the Excel spreadsheet? All right, I see a few yeses. Great, cool. So this is our um, this is our MoFrat. Let's go to the very front page. It provides a spot where you could put your LPHA's logo, and very important, right on the top, it has a Read Me First. We are able to put some of the very basics of how to get started right on this tab. So if you go to do your MoFrat and you're lost, you don't know how to get started, we provide it right here so you don't have to go searching through a manual. It breaks down some of the basic um, different variables, how to enter data, and what some of the different analyses mean. Right. So we're gonna go over to our first step, step one, baseline data, and we're gonna enter some different information. So for example, in fake city, Missouri, hypothetically, how many people do we want in um, fake city, Missouri? 
shout out and answer. 2K, all right, let's go with nice little 2,000 people. As you can see right away, it starts changing some of the formulas. All these not calculated has switched over to zero. And you can see how it updates in real time some of the calculations. So for example, in a 2K city, let's assume we have five deaths per day. It was able to calculate per 100,000, we have 250 per day. It will go on and do this for each one of these baselines. And you could see that it calculates per 100,000 per day for each one of them. It goes on to show you some healthcare, some inpatient, all of those variables that I talked about before. Now, with some information filled out, we are able to go over to one of our scenarios, let's say tornado, for example, and we are able to see how some of that information was either already plugged in or came from our uh, step number one. So for a tornado, we were able to uh, use the scenario of Joplin, Missouri. Uh, you could see right in the top, it describes the scenario. Uh, the scenario used to predict the imp uh, impacts of a tornado was the tornado that struck Joplin. The tornado track left a destruction that was 22 miles long, and um, it goes through some of the different impacts there. When you start here, you'll see that some of the numbers aren't from a formula, they are from the scenario. For example, 160 lives lost, came from the scenario and not from the data from step one. So for some of this, you're not going to be editing it at all. You'll be leaving it as is. However, it will be able to calculate based off of what you put in the baseline, how much of an impact that would be. So for an example, it shows right here, the baseline that we put mortality per day was five. And if it jumps up to 160, then that's going to be a score of four over a hundred percent increase. So you can see we didn't have to type in 160 and we didn't have to type in the five either. It just brought it from the first sheet. It goes on to do this again with EMS transports. It shows that it goes from two to a thousand two to a thousand, two to one. And if you ever have a question on why some of the calculations are what they are, we've provided that within the data source. Um, for example, this says 25% increase. So the formula for this is literally what we had on our baseline times 0.25. That seemed clear, pretty self-explanatory for you guys. Any questions? Awesome. So I hope this so sort when of you go oh, when you go from the um, from the numbers that you're plugging in to the percentages. Mm -hmm. uh, not getting that part. Okay, so. Of the magnitude score. Okay, the magnitude score, a lot of uh, the magnitude score is mostly sort of a qualitative, um, like a qualitative answer to it. Uh, it breaks it down into different brackets. So, for example, if it was between, you know what, I'm going to change one to be, let's see. If this is going to be 160, let's do a fourth of 160 and do, I'm going to do on my baseline mortality 40. Baseline mortality, or let's just do four. Do some easy, easy math. So for this, it will, 
it will do the calculation of whether of how much of an eight percent increase um, it goes from the baseline to the hazard related, and then depending on what what category it falls into of an increase, it just assigns a number to it. So, for example, this one is an over a hundred percent increase, so it's a four. However, if I were to put in exactly 160 to show zero increase, we could see how that changes. So that, that would be a three, it's going to be less than 100% increase. It just assigns um, a qualitative valuable to it. Um, for a lot of these, they also ask if you don't have some of this data, you can put a, um, you can move from use quantitative value. So the numbers that we've been plugging in to a qualitative. And that's if you're doing your best estimate for the most part, if you're estimating how many, if you might not know how many, but we provide it for you. So most of these won't be relevant, but if you just wanted to say, oh, I estimate that this is going to be going on for two weeks, then you could just put it in that way instead. That's essentially, what these magnitude scores are. The magnitude scores help as far as the analysis just by lumping it into groups and helping with some of that math. So you can look over here in some of the impacts. You could see all the all the scores are between that zero and four because it's getting a calculation between all those different zeros and fours. If I remember correctly, um, some of the, I haven't done a Thyra in Missouri, I've done a Thyra in Illinois, I believe um, it has some parts of it that act pretty similarly. If it falls between this score and this score, it's a one. If it falls between this and this, it's a two. Awesome. If we were to go back to our scenario for tornado, we could see that now that we've plugged a few things in, down here, if we answered all the questions, we would be able to calculate a severity score for public health and healthcare risk. We would be able to assess whether you know it has a specific impact on different at-risk populations. And then we would start getting some of our adjusted risk scores and preparedness scores. We could also get some visual graphs for each one of our scenarios as well. You could see in this one, as far as how the tool is um, filled out right now, we have a high community impact, pretty low healthcare impact, pretty low public health impact. Any other questions as far as filling in the baseline and the hazards? I'm about to get into some of the analysis component. Awesome. With no questions, um, let's talk about that because I think that's one of the more exciting parts of it. You know, we could all plug in numbers to an Excel spreadsheet, but what do we get to do with it afterwards? some of that. Pull up my slideshow again. Do you guys see the slideshow again? So Mark, are you raising a hand or are you saying like, yes, you see it? I 
Kay, can you hear me? Uh -huh. Sorry. Yeah. Can, can you hear What's me? Up? Yeah. No. I, well, it was, it was literally, I was giving you the thumbs up, but I gave you the, oh. the hand raise instead. So that was oh, my, uh, my uh, connection to you. But I did, could I just inter interject one thing? Yes, um, um, go ahead. In, okay, so I just wanted to uh, also reference um, back with the baseline data pieces where those are together in sections. Um, one of the uh, tasks within the, the FEP capabilities that you will be working on is to um, assess each one of the 15 FEP capabilities along with the functions within those capabilities. And then also the same with the hospital preparedness program capabilities. So um, with full um, information assessed within those two tabs of the baseline health or baseline data, uh, that will also um, um, that will also support the the analysis piece. So that's one of the things that is just included as as part of your um, assessment of the both the FEP and the HPP capabilities that are consistent with both of those grants. And we know that public health obviously has the 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 FEP capability framework. Um, with the hospital preparedness capability framework, that may be a conversation with the healthcare coalitions and or other healthcare partners. So you you may have you know some direct experience, but with that, or um, if that's a a need to collaborate further, then you can certainly do that. We've had counties kind of approach that in different ways, but I just did want to make that that point. Awesome. Yeah, I think one uh, really valuable thing that uh, we really hope people start doing with this tool is, you know, start double dipping. You know, if you can use this tool, yes, for your capability one requirements, but also use it to collaborate with your healthcare partners, um, use it, you know, for their HPP. Um, you know, any, any sort of use for it that you can think of anything that you get value from. Not only do you have full blessing to do it, but let us know if you find any creative uses with this information. Um, but yeah, uh, collaboration with, um, you know, the other capabilities and whatnot and building upon it is really great. Um, I see. Uh, Question in the chat. What is this? One moment. Based on what this gentleman is saying, is this tool for an organization or a geographic location? This tool is primarily designed the way it is designed. That's a really great question. It's designed for the counties. I know in the last session, somebody asked if, you know, if it could be used for a city. Um, this tool is designed for the counties. However, there's going to be a lot of co collaboration with healthcare partners. You're going to need to know their capabilities. You might need to talk to specific cities if, um, you know, if they want to break down some of their components. But the way the tool is designed, it's for a holistic county, especially when it comes to that baseline uh, spreadsheet that we have. That only provides county information. So that's a really great question. Um, you're going to end up getting a lot of valuable information from your healthcare partners, but the overall picture is not necessarily just for them. It's the county as a whole. So. All right. So now that we've completed this MOFRAF. Um, now what? What do we do with this? Um, as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of information that goes into this MOFRAT. Some of it is more helpful than others. And, you know, we could have all this information, but if we're not organizing it in a useful, smart way, it's going to be a little difficult. So just because I find it fascinating and interesting, 
the first analysis that you are given is the summary of impacts. It has every data point that ends up going into the MOFRAT. And it's a little difficult to read, not gonna lie. Um, so uh, hopefully in this last little section, I could break down some of the more important uses for it, some of the more valuable analysis, the ones that I find interesting and uh, just kind of open-ended discussion about what we might be able to do with this tool. Because it is new, we're gonna be finding out all sorts of things we can do with it. So first, um, a question that's gonna be on a lot of people's minds is the submission and reviewing process. Uh, submission still in development. The goal is to make it as similar as other you know, processes as possible. So one possible suggestion was sending it to a generic email, and then that could be uploaded to SharePoint. Um, another thing that was just discussed, even you know, as of today, was that website where you download it. Is there a way that right on that website, there's a way to upload it? Uh, we're still playing with this, and when we have a way that we, when we have a specific way, we want you to submit it. We will let you know through the distribution list. Um, but for right now, if you are doing your MoFrat and you have any questions, concerns, or I think I did it right, but I just want it looked at, you can send it over to me and I provided my email. Uh, literally tomorrow, I'll be going over to the health department and talking to a few folks about this. So uh, if you have any preferences, send them my way, um, but we will, you know, it takes some time to complete a MoFrat it should take you at least a month or two, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but to really complete a MOFRAT, you're going to want to plan a few weeks out. So um, we're not quite worried about submission yet, um, but we will let you know when we have a set process for that. Right now, we just want you to look at the tool and start playing with it. Reviewing criteria. Uh, for the risk assessments, we know that those are very subjective. What a completed risk assessment looks like for Cole County is going to be very different for maybe Clark County, for, you know, Cass County, where we know that not all scenarios apply to all people. So we can't really judge them on accuracy. We can judge them on completion. Um, but it's up to you guys to just put the information that you find best, whether it's our data sources or data sources you get at the county level. Um, you know, just do it to the best of your ability. The completion cycle, we are anticipating this being same as the regular risk assessment cycle. That's why I asked you that in the beginning of the session. Um, just once every five years as per the risk assessment requirement. But ideally, you know, if you're going to be doing your EOP every two to three years, if you're going to be updating some other documents, it might be wise to go at least look at it every two to three years to see, you know, to see if anything's drastically changed. And we already completed that poll. Is there a cookie cutter outline of data points that need to go into a MoFrat? Um, yes. So uh, when you download the MoFrat, you will see that under the hazards, you're going to see that a lot of the scenario data points are already filled in for you. The one example being the 160 deaths for the Joplin tornado. Uh, that's going to be something that is very cookie cutter. There's no formula to it. If you see it pre-filled in, please leave it as is and don't change it. If you accidentally change it, it'll be provided in the manual so you could go back. Um, as far as for your county information, uh, that's going to be provided to you in the baseline data sheet. And that will be one of the last things that I pull up and I could show you that, um, Yes, in the um, Mark is saying in the chat, uh, there is a summary of some of these scenarios in there as well um, in the manual. Uh, in the baseline data sheet, you're going to have a lot of the information for your county, and that is going to be where you start, um, just plugging that in for your county. 
and I could show you some of the examples of what is filled in on that. So one of the most useful analysis tools that um, really what this tool is designed for and what it, uh, the MOFRAT does best is a planning priority score. So it's, you know, just a basic ranking of scenarios from what will have the most public health impact to the least public health impact. Uh, you could see in this example, your, um, the scenarios that were listed had pandemic at the top that had the biggest public health impact, as you could expect. And then towards the bottom, this area didn't have a lot of wildfires, didn't have a lot of coastal storms, so it rated it the least. Uh, this is a very uh, simple list. It's easy to read. It's not super detailed. But it really helps as far as the basics. What am I planning for on this work plan? Um, it's going to provide a very similar list just for public health and just for health care. If you wanted to just, you know, just see what, you know, help your health care systems, they're asking what should they be working on? Hey, here's, you know, just the ones that impact them. Or, hey, here's ones that mainly just to impact the community in a community health way. We could just focus on those. Um, as I said, it's not super detailed, but it's one of the most important takeaways. As, um, and it auto ranks um, anything that you filled in blank and you left blank. We don't have a coast, so I'm not putting down anything for coastal storm. It just automatically ranks it as last. So, as I said, a completed tool might mean a few things are blank because you know, you don't have a nuclear facility, so you don't bother, or, you know, you don't have coastal storms, so you don't bother. Um, what looks, what is a completed and accurate form for you might be different for someone else. This is a summary of scores. It adds a little bit more detail. It has why, how we got to those scores, and it's mostly broken down into the severity, the risk, the at-risk populations, and that probability. Uh, what I really like about this tool is that, um, one, it's clear to read. You could easily look and say, oh, hmm, you know what, winter storms, uh, it's in the red for probability but it's in the yellows and greens for severity. Or you can look at tornado and see it's reds across the board. Um, I really like how that visually pops out at you. Um, and it could troubleshoot scores that you got that don't necessarily make sense. Because you might think, oh, well, winter storms, we have them all the time, the probability is high. Why didn't that score higher? Oh, well, maybe the severity isn't that bad and the severity is in the green and that's why you, it didn't rank higher. Um, that's a 1 really useful um, way to use this analysis. Another useful analysis is the at risk populations. Um, we know that during an emergency during a hazard. There's going to be inequitable disproportionate impacts on vulnerable populations. And this tool really shows you what scenarios are going to have a major uh, gap. So, if you are trying to assess your access and functional needs services, or you're trying to plan for a specific community, this might be a tool you look at and say, mm, well, maybe we don't need to worry too much about that in a drought scenario, but we really need to worry about that in a hazmat scenario or, you know, just thinking about your planning and exercise. Some other important uses for the MOFRAT that we predict. Um, we really, uh, really feel like this is going to facilitate collaboration between public health partners and healthcare systems. As I said, this is for the whole entire county. But you really have to work with those healthcare systems to fill it out accurately. So we hope that this uh, leads to some partnership, maybe some shared training and exercises, uh, just some collaboration down the road. Um, we can't really get accurate numbers, specific numbers. Um, I've said this a few times. It's more about the estimates, but you can get some great estimates for planning purposes. 
Um, it already includes some scenarios for, um, you know, relevant scenarios for Missouri and how you can estimate that way. And if you use the MOFRAT over several years, or if many people are using the MOFRAT and many people switch over, um, we're able to do some multi-year comparisons. We're able to look at some trends and we're able to see if anything that we've worked on does provide some quantitative results. Um, so just being able to use this tool and having a standard, we're able to, you know, just look and see what sort of changes are happening. Better funding arguments. Um, yes, we are planning down the road to make this a capability one, um, you know, a capability one um, uh, activity. However, uh, for right now, um, it's really just for you guys. Uh, you could use any risk assessment, but this is the one that we feel the more we work on, the more we update, the more we get feedback from you guys. Um, we may just move towards this standard as well as working with other grants, working with other community projects. Maybe a city is looking for a grant and you can show, hey, with, you know, our risk assessment, these are the things that we need to be working on. It's one thing to say something qualitatively, but to have, you know, crunch some numbers and say, we crunch numbers and this is what we got. You know, it just really looks so really good to a lot of stakeholders. Um, it's going to show you some training priorities if you're not sure what scenarios you want to be working on and whatever your agency finds useful. Again, this is a brand new tool. We're really excited about it, um, but we're mostly excited about what you guys end up doing with it and the feedback we get from you guys. I would love to participate in a tabletop exercise for this tool. Realistic? Hmm. That'd be interesting. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch it and see what we could come up with. Um, so I'll feel free to message me and we could uh we could see what we come up with. Um I would also love to see if anybody's been working on personally, I would love to see if anyone's been working off of a different risk assessment tool. Because, um, oh yeah, the scenarios in there would be perfect to apply to a TTX. Um, yeah, so uh, just Mark's comment in the comments. Um, I would love to see if you've been working on a different risk assessment tool, how it compares to the MOFRAT, if you're getting drastically different results, if uh, using some of these scenarios in a tabletop exercise provides a different perspective or has any perks. Um, uh, it would just be really neat to see how the counties take this tool and start applying it. So I left my contacts here. Um, I'm Kay Beasley. You can reach out at any time. Jessica Sexton and Mark Payton, uh, they've been working hard, especially on some of the, um, you know, Mark's been working very hard on getting some of the numbers for the baseline data sheet um, that I'm gonna show you in a moment. Uh, so you can reach out to any one of us on this team and we'll be able to help you. And um, if you have any questions, now's a good time, but I'm also, while you're thinking of your questions, I'm gonna pull up that baseline data sheet to show you guys, because it's gonna be an important tool. Any questions? Should be a sign. Valid. Awesome. Yeah, um, it's, you know, it's going to be a work in progress for a while. So thanks for the compliment, but I would love to see if you're still saying that after you fill, fill it out. Um, 
Yeah, a lot of people are really excited for it. Um, I'm just, you know, really excited to see, you know, how counties make it their own. Um, I'm not sure. Are you guys able to see the spreadsheet now? Yes, I, I can see. Awesome. That. Awesome. Uh, I'm seeing a few yeses now. Yep. So this is our baseline spreadsheet. It's going to be in the same place where you could download the MOFRAT. And it has a lot of the publicly available, um, as mentioned before by Saul, some of that cookie cutter information, the very basic plug and play. So, for example, total population we are able to get from the census, total deaths per day. We are able to get uh, total primary care office visits from the MPCA. Um, total ER visits per day. It's just a whole bunch of things for some of the information that we were not able to provide. It kind of describes where you might need to go for that. So all these ones in blue, they're from your LPHA. Just information that you'll have to get from that end. Um, some of the different data sources. Uh, you might have to find total trauma centers functioning ORs. You might have to find that locally. And then for some data, we were able to find it for some, but not for all. For example, total trauma center injuries per day. That's not a requirement for, um, you know, for everyone to send over. We were able to fill out what we had, but at the local level partnership with your healthcare professionals, you might be able to get that a lot easier. Uh, we also provide some at risk population data for you on another tab. We have a lot of that hearing disabilities, vision disabilities. Percent over 65. And on the community characteristics. It has some information and then it also has where you could find more information like the wrapped tool or city data. And it provides that recommended resource for you. Awesome. Any other questions? I feel like a lot of the questions are going to pop up when people are actually playing around with it, but. Awesome. Well, on that note, oh, can you increase size? Yes. Um, let me let me pull it up again. Let me see if I can zoom in nice and close to some of these. Like this is for our community characteristics. You could see percent under 40, total housing units. Zoom in on this one. Percent of population with diabetes. And as you can see, a lot of this information, um, it's not a lot of protected information. It's not, um, I know some of the initial conversations, there was a lot of worry about, you know, you know, what what could what could people do with this data? Um, you know, does it need to be where are we going to put it so it's protected? But a lot of it is publicly sourced. A lot of it is something your LPHA probably already has. You just get a nice good idea for the different sort of questions that are asked. Total pharmacies. And you could see like, you know, for some communities that have zero hospitals, um, you know, it is a thing. There are quite a few zeros on here. We found that it still provides a pretty accurate depiction of what's going on in your community um, because it shows that it will have a big impact if you have a disaster in your area that impacts public health, not having a healthcare facility in your community will have a larger impact. And we found that when we were workshopping this with some rural communities, it, 
it really provided that difference um, and it reflected accurately. Awesome. Anything else you guys are curious about? Comments on? If not, I just want to drop again in the chat. This is the website where you will be downloading it from. You'll just need that website. It has the baseline data spreadsheet we were just looking at in the MoFrat tool. And when it's officially published, it will have the manual. Until we have the manual, feel free to ask us a billion questions. We are more than happy um, to answer that. And it will also help us develop a really comprehensive FAQ. So we will also get an FAQ. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. It will actually really be helping us develop some tools for you. But it, it, all right. I see a comment from Mark. We are still refining some of the data elements, specifically PCPs, PCP visits and EMS transport transports. Yeah. As we get new, uh, as we get new data sources, preferred data sources, we will excitedly let you know, hey, you know, this one was good, but this one's better. And um, update you guys on that. Awesome. Well, if we have no more questions, feel free to reach out um, when you're working on it. Um, and uh, as of right now, there's no major plans for um, anything on the state side as far as doing like with this. This is really just for you in your planning. Um, this is for you and your um, risk assessment. So it's your tool. You use it how you find, you know what you find useful. Let us know what you find is useful. If you've developed any interesting products at, with uh, the information or you go on to do a tabletop from, because you've done this risk assessment or anything that after this process, you know, if you say, hey, you know, the MoFrat really helped us with this, let us know. But all right. Well, thank you so much, you guys. And I believe this recording we will find a place to put this recording maybe on that same website and uh, we'll let you know where we're going to stick this recording so you could view it later if need be. So thank you. Have a good day.